Welcome to episode 137, Michael Bloomberg, 8 Lessons. This is an outline of episode 137. Lesson number one, he's an accidental entrepreneur. Bloomberg started at age 39 after being fired from Solomon Brothers. So age 39, uh, you know, if Solomon hadn't been so short-sighted as to fire you, perhaps you'd still be a partner there, I don't know. But what was it like to be well, I, in your I 30s I, at that the time? The truth, what I would be is working for my girlfriend because the remnants of Solomon Brothers wound up in Citibank and she's on the board of Citibank. <laughs> no, I would not have worked for her, but that's another issue. <laughs> I watched how people really took care of others and dealt with problems and um, uh, delegated work out and, uh, it was uh, a great education, and then when I became an entrepreneur, was I more ready or less ready? I don't know, you never know. Um, but I grew up in a world where you got a job and you stayed there the rest of your life. And I never would have quit in good times, there'd be no reason to, and I certainly wouldn't quit in bad times. I've always believed that you have an obligation to your employer in bad times to stay around and help them. After all, that's the other side of mm -hmm. the social compact of mm -hmm. you going to work and them giving you a job. Lesson number two, he is the master of delegation and the master of time management. Between 2002 and 2013, he took absence of 13 years to be mayor of New York City. When he left his company Bloomberg in 2001, he was worth $5 billion. But when he returned to Bloomberg in 2014, he was worth $30 billion. Wow, how did he do it? Started in 81, and after 20 years, it's uh, fair for the other employees and the other owners, of which the three guys that started with me had a piece of the action, a few other small ones. Um, uh, it was, and, and for our customers, it was time to give everybody a new restart and try new things, and it would be good for me. And I will say I was away for 13 years, including the year I ran for office, and I came back, and the people that I put in charge did a, a phenomenal job, and had I been there, I don't know that it would have been any better. They there did. are two reasons why Bloomberg's net worth grew 600% during the years he was mayor of New York City. First, he could count on the other three co-founders of Bloomberg to run his company. The trios are Thomas Secunda, Charles Seeger, and Duncan McMillan. Second, in 2008, he bought back 20% of Bloomberg from Merrill Lynch for $4.5 billion. In so doing, he raised his ownership of Bloomberg from 66% to 88% in just one year. Lesson number three, control these three things and you will be successful. These three things are, first, how hard you work, second, how honest you are, third, how well you work with others. The more you work, the better you do. It's that simple. I always outwork the other guy. Later in the book, you talk yeah. about uh, arriving at work at 6.30, 7 in the morning and working till 7 or 8 at night. Why is that important to you? And what does that tell other people? The only thing that you can control that influences success in life is how hard you work, how honest you are, and how well you deal with others. You can control those variables. Those variables. You can't control how lucky you are, although the more you work, the luckier you get. You have no influence on the intellectual capabilities that God did or did not give you, but you can work as hard as possible. You can be scrupulously honest so that people respect you, and you can get along with others because nobody does anything by themselves. Lesson number four, go for the challenge, not money. In 1966, after he got his MBA from Harvard, he was offered a job from both Goldman and a job from Solomon Brothers. The Goldman offer was $14,000 a year. Solomon's Brothers offer was $9,000 a year. Bloomberg chose to work for Solomon Brothers instead. Uh, and being an entrepreneur is great. It's a challenge and it's exciting. But if you get a chance to go and to learn about the real world with a great firm, you should do that. It doesn't matter how much you get paid. It doesn't matter what your title is. Uh, I went to Solomon rather than Goldman, who had both offered me a job. 
Um, Goldman offered me a job at $14,000 a year, which was a lot of money in those days. Solomon offered me a job at $9,000. Uh, I sat down with the number two guy in the company, John Goodfriend, and I said, I'd like to come to work here. Uh, and he said, why? I said, well, because Goldman told me what they wanted me to do. And when I asked your sales manager who was doing the hiring, what would I do at, at Solomon? He said, how the hell would we know? We don't even know who you are. You know, we're just hiring. You offer a piece of paper or an interview, and who knows what our needs are going to be down the road, and who knows what your skill sets are. You have to find out in the real world. And that made so much more sense to me than Goldman. The trouble was Solomon was offering me $9,000, Goldman $14,000. $9,000, I had a budget of $120 for rent and $5 for food each day, and I showed it to a good friend. I said, I just can't come. And uh, it was the smartest decision I made because Solomon gave me a chance to do lots of different mm -hmm. things. And I said at a memorial service for Billy Solomon, and no offense to Harvard Business School, we both went, but I learned more from Billy Solomon and John Goodfriend about management in the years I was there than I did the two years at Harvard Business School. Lesson number five, always look to us what is great tomorrow. Should have, would have, and could have are not useful things. Quote from the book, afterward, after you were fired uh, or let go from Solomon, I didn't sit around wondering what was happening at the old firm. I didn't go back and visit. I never look over my shoulder. Once finished, gone, life continues. Yes, you can't sit there and uh, should have, would have, and could have is not a particularly useful thing to spend your time doing. It will just uh, leave you heart sick or it will leave you living a past life and not looking towards what could be great tomorrow. Well, that's it, number six. You should always have a good time. I told young people when they go off to college, you have to study and you have to get good grades, but you certainly should have a good time as well because that's part of your growing up experience and there's no point in leading life to suffer all the time. You want to enjoy life as well as the next person. Lesson number seven, how to save millions of lives. I think this measure will help reduce impulse purchases. And if it does, it will literally save lives. Michael Bloomberg is talking about tobacco products. He wants them kept out of sight in all stores in New York City. He's hoping to change lives of millions across the country with some huge support from an alumnus. Gift will beef up manpower at Hopkins on five issues Bloomberg believes impact quality of life drug addiction, environmental threats, adolescent health, obesity, and gun violence in America. Lesson number eight, you can make government work. What possessed you to run for mayor? I like challenges, and everybody said government could never work, and I always thought that was bullshit, that you could make it work. As mayor, what are the things, say the three things you're most proud of doing? Well, number one is that uh, after 12 years in office, life expectancy in New York City uh, improved by three years and was three years greater than the national average. Um, we brought down crime, we uh, uh, reduced fire deaths, we reduced traffic deaths and infant mortality. Uh, but then there is creating the economic engine that's New York, uh, cultural institutions that bring in business, reducing some of the impediments to starting a business in terms of permitting and that sort of stuff getting together people who uh, w have the skills that the companies need. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. Remember, becoming a billionaire and becoming the mayor of one of the biggest cities in the world are not mutually exclusive. Michael Bloomberg has shown us it can be done. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.